But anyway, we're going to leave the old patriarchal norms of the Piscean Age. We're going to be brought into the, the, a global consciousness, a Christ consciousness and understanding of peace and harmony throughout the world, symbolized by the 11th part of the zodiac called Aquarius. Aquarius' symbol, here's a graphic here of Aquarius. It's a he or a she, and in some cases it's an androgynous person. Think about that that is pouring water out. Now I want you to think of something in the Revelation, the book of Revelation, that has to do with pouring stuff out. Go read that, all right? Um, here is another symbol, the, the simplified symbol of the age of Aquarius. I want you to notice that it is two waterways, one above the other. This is important. Now, I, I, all again, all of this has to do with what Jesus said as it was in the days of Noah. In the days of Noah, we think an ark and we think of a flood. And so the age of Aquarius promises that there's going to come a time when the earth is going to be overwhelmed. It's going to be flooded once again. It's going to be flooded with light and harmony and peace and marijuana smoking and communes and free. Anyway, that's what they believe it's going to be. And nobody's going to fight over anything. We're all going to live in communities. We're going to be communitarians. We're going to share everything. Hey, can I have your wife today? Sure, can I have yours? That's what the hippies were trying out. They were preceding the age of Aquarius. This is what these people have in mind. And they're going to, the, the floodwaters, the floodwaters of Noah's day were a picture. And I'm going to show you this from the Bible of the flood of Aquarius that's going to take over the earth one of these days, probably soon. Let me show you this. Now remember, the Aquarian symbol was two water waves. Okay, I can't, I can't curl my hand like you see in the symbol there, okay? But it's just two water waves. One up here, one down here. That, I was looking at that one day and I'm going, you know what? That's in the Bible. Let me show it to you. In the days of Noah, let's see where the water came from. Genesis 7:11. in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were open. Or as some of y'all say, windows. The windows of heaven. The fountains of the great deep. So the Aquarian symbol again, take a look at it. You see one on the bottom and one on the top. The fountains of the great deep opened up, and so floodwaters now are rising up out of the earth. Also the windows of heaven were open. Things up in heaven, water in heaven. Now they're falling, falling down to the earth. I want you to think about that. We're going to see this now in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 12, notice what happens. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did what? Cast them to the earth and the dragon which stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born and she brought forth a man child. There it is. I mean, stop right here. We looked at this in the last video in relation to what I believe that being caught up, being literally the body of Christ, um, it, being born there and meeting Jesus in the air in the clouds. But notice that at this time, we have angels falling down from heaven to the earth. Think about it. And then, then in Revelation 9, we have covered this, I don't know how many times, the fifth fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. To him was given the key of the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and there were pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke a locust upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal. Think of the pitch and the ark the seal of God in their foreheads, and to them was given that they should not kill them, that they should be tormented. How long? Five months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. So here we see in the book of Revelation, we, there's, a, there's an invade. Folks, there's a flood coming. It's not a flood of God. God promised he wouldn't flood it with water anymore. The Mississippi River's not going to run over. The, the Nile's not going to spew out of its bank. It's, that's not going to happen. What's going to happen is there's, there's another flood coming, and I'm going to show it to you scripturally. They're going to rise up out of the depths of the earth and they're going to fall down from the skies in heaven. And that's what the Aquarian age is all. This is the deception 
that is in the New Age movement and everything from Dr. Oz to Dr. Phil to uh, uh, Dr. Rick Warren who promotes this nonsense. New Age garbage is everywhere and it's promoting the idea that we're going to enter in a, a, another, a transformation, a new age. And we're going we're, we're gonna to be visited from below and from above. That's what this is all about. Uh, notice this in Revelation chapter 9. How long did these scorpions that came out of the pit prevail? The Bible says five months. Let's go back to, I mean, literally what Jesus said, the days of Noah. G Genesis chapter 7, verse 44, and the waters prevailed upon the earth how long? And 150 days, exactly 150 days. You know, that's five months. Same time frame. Jesus said the days of Noah. This is it right here. That was part of it. This is part of the days of Noah right here. So there's a connection. I've always seen a similarity here also between the number 150, the 150 days and the five months. Um, let, let me do this. In the middle of the Bible, there's a book of little books. It's like a hymn book in the middle of the Bible. It's the book of Psalms. There's exactly 150 of them. And you go, oh, big deal. Have you ever read the Psalms? How many places in the Psalms did you see things mentioned like floods of waters and floods and being overwhelmed with waves? And You've seen those before? Let's look at some of them. Psalm 18, verse 16, he sent from above, he took me, he, he did what? He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy. And notice how the waters are equated. The waters are strong enemies. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. Look at Psalm 32. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto, unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters, they shall not come nigh unto him. Now, if this was only referring to the waters of the flood, the floods of the, the great floods of the waters in the days of Noah, then that wouldn't really mean anything to me because, well, okay, yeah, God saved Noah out of the flood. This is also future prophetic as well. And this uh, the, has all about, uh, Psalm 32 is all about salvation, having your sins covered, having your transgressions hidden uh, and blotted out. Uh, by the blood of Jesus Christ. And God said, everyone that is godly, and yes, godly people sin. And the remedy for that sin is the salvation of God. God offers, God gives us repentance. It is the goodness of God that leads us, up to, us to repentance, the Bible says. And it's for a time when surely in the floods of great waters, they shall not come nigh unto him. What? His sinfulness, the, sin, the man of sin himself, the strong enemies, those that hated God, the floods of great waters, man's sinfulness. Right, where did he cast our sins anyway? In the depths of the sea. Where is the man of sin? He's in the sea. Those things are going to rise up once again on mankind and cover the earth. Now, think about this also. Think about, um, think about water in relation to a, a practice that we do as Christians called Baptism. You see, baptism is all about resurrection from, from the dead. We believe, number one, that Christ died and he rose again. That's what baptism shows. Number two, we believe that we also, when we are saved, we become dead to sin and we rise in newness of life in Jesus Christ. We also believe, according to Scripture, that when this body is in the grave, the trumpet will sound, Christ will raise it up again at the last day. And notice that in this great, beautiful picture of salvation called baptism, it's not done with sand, air, blankets, a coat. We use water. And the good guys don't just go like that. I mean, we use the whole bathtub. We have a big baptistry, and we put them down in the water because he said he pulled, drew me out of many waters. We're pulling people out of the flood. That's what that, bat, now water baptism does not save anybody. Don't write me your letters or anything like that. But baptism, spiritual baptism in our spirit comes from the Holy Ghost. Look at what Peter said in relation to baptism 
and the symbol of baptism. First Peter chapter 3, verse 20, which sometime were disobedient when once the long-suffering of God waited when. Look at that phrase. The days of Noah. While the ark was apparent, preparing wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved. How? By water. The like figure wherein to even baptism doth also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, even in here, he's telling you water, being washed with water on the outside does not save you. It does just, you know, just because you've got clean hands. That doesn't mean you're not a sinner. It's the clearing and the clarifying of your conscience by the water of the word. That's what saves us. But he's talking about the whole idea of Noah being a picture of baptism, where that is what is saving. Remember, as this abounds, where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. Isn't that, I, just, I love this, I love this. I hope you're getting something out of this. Let's go back to the Psalms, the 150 Psalms. And let's look at these stories of floods and, and what they're related to. Psalm 69, 2. I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. I am weary of my crying. My throat is dried. Mine eyes fail while I wait for my God. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head. They that would destroy me... Think of the destroyer in the pit, being mine enemies wrongfully are mighty. Then I restored that which I took not away. Notice the floods are related here to those that hate me and, and the destroyers. This is what we're dealing with, the fallen angels and those rising up out of the pit. Psalm 144, verse 7, send thine hand from above, rid me and deliver me out of what? Great waters from the hand of strange children. Stop right here. Strange children are children that are not known by the father. I mean, dads, you know, come home after work and you see some kids sitting on your couch playing your video games and you go, who are these kids? You know, and she explains, well, you know, the neighbor went away and wanted us to, you know, watch this or, the, you know, Johnny brought them home from school. Okay, I just know that they're not mine. Think about it because that's where we're going. These strange, the floodwaters are the hand of the strange children. They're not from God. Where are they from? Whose mouth speaketh vanity, and in their right hand is a, and their right hand is the right hand of falsehood. Now, watch this, okay? This is my Bible. It is in the right hand of God. Uh, the symbol of the right hand is absolutely beautiful in the scripture. Okay? The right hand of God is is absolute truth. Think about this. Uh, let's let's do this. The Book of Mormon. And you'll see why I had this out here in a minute, okay? This is the strange children. Their right hand is the right hand of falsehood. There's not anything about this book that's true. And I'm going to show you this here in a minute, okay? Psalm 18:4. The sorrows of death compass me. The floods of who? Ungodly men made me afraid. In, in, in these 150 Psalms, you, see, you know what you see? You see salvation out of the flood. That's what, that's what I'm getting at here. Because you, you see the progression all through the book of Psalms. It starts out, you know, it, it starts out being low. And by the time you get to Psalm 145, 146, 147, 148, 149, 150, it's about shouting and praising God for joy and for his salvation and singing praises to him. Think about it. That's, that's the translation. That's what's going to happen when those trumpets sound. Uh, here's another.